Hey guys, we are back, but there's a bit of a debate and understanding of what episode we are. So it's episode 27, but if you guys knew what we just did, we just did a, an hour recording on mute. <laughs> no one picked up on it. It says microphone is off, the red dot's on, we're on mute, and we had no idea that we did this last recording with no audio. So theoretically, it's episode 28, yeah. but factually, we are still in episode 27. It's publishing at 27. We're publishing at 27. So guys, that might not make sense, but we just totally stuffed up. <laughs> and I've got my $10 ready for the swear jar because I think there's going to be a few from frustrations and what the hell just happened. But anyway, oh. it was fun. We cried, we joked, and then we thought, let's do it again. <laughs> well, we had that much fun, we're going to do it again. It. Yeah. Luckily, Cam decided to stick around <laughs> on this one. He hasn't just chucked it in. Because we Face do have – and, and we, do have, we do have a busy schedule. So it's not that we just sit around here and just, you know, just do podcasts all day and have time to do another no, hour. No, definitely um, not. <laughs> all right, so – God damn. So we'll start again. The end it feels weird that I'm introducing you. Hi, how are you? Because we've done all that, but it's just going to feel weird. Not for the viewers, Not for you, for you guys, are watching. For yeah. All right, breathe. Welcome. <laughs> we have Cam Hutton on the show. <laughs> As it was news, what's hey, going mate, on? Thanks um, for having me back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, uh, or is again. it back from the last hour or again. back from last week? Oh, I don't um, know, I'm just back. All right, know. my head's spinning. <laughs> um, thanks for having me back, mate. Good to be back. Another week. We got Cam. Cam, thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to talk about D Day today which is going to be a really good com conversation yep. and to get Cam's perspective as a player mm -hmm. and as a captain who played for you uh, for a few seasons there. Um, yeah, excited to be back. Some good developments though this week. Yes, good developments we have. Um, so you want to bring that up for yeah, us? Yeah, so last night we made official, but everyone knows we've done a century room, wellbeing room that we created here. Uh, Kim Weimer, uh, me and her put our heads together and decided to say let's invest in – a safe platform or a safe environment. Yeah. So we had the space. It's always had something we're going to do with it. Yeah. Uh, like me and Cam, we've done workshops there before with kids. We know we've done some well-being stuff. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't know what we're going to do with it. But this just made sense. All abilities. Uh, we got uh, mental well-being, a bit of engagement. So safe platform. So central room, well-being room, and we've named it after a lovely girl. So we'll put this little flyer up. So Romy, uh, four years ago, she was part of our program. Unfortunately, due to Unfortunate circumstances, she passed, uh, which you know broke us all and to pieces, let alone her own family. So with the support of her family, Kim, husband, and her family, and my family, they've all got around this and support the fact that we've come up with a name called Romy's Room. Yeah. So we're named after her. Um, it has meaning. It's emotional connection, and I think it just needs to have that story about what the, it gives it more real thoughts into why space like these are very important. Absolutely. Without going into detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to, in fairness to all involved. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're wrapped. It's done. That bit's done. The, the rest will now translate over the next week or two. It's just the names was the biggest thing. Yeah. The room's ready. But now go uh, start to promote the Facebook side of things, separate that from transition, even though transition is supporting that yeah. in the same banner and for the same reason, it will be its own little identity. Gotcha. So we're excited about that. So Kim, thank you for jumping on board with me on that one and partner, part, being partners with this. Uh, I've known her for a very long time, forty years. That's just the family that the family introduced me to basketball, um, and she's got the same age as me. Uh, so it just made sense. So one conversation led to something else. Led to that. Yeah. Very happy, Fantastic. tired, emotional from it all. Uh, no tears yet, but don't be surprised later something just pops out because I think it's going to come. Um, I think I'm carrying a lot of emotions right now with a lot of things. Yeah. So they'll be released soon at some point. Mm. So, yeah, good. Uh, excellent stuff. Well done to everyone involved. Great. Absolutely. Great, great concept. Yeah. Uh, loving it. Now, we have Cam Hutton. He's a TS coach. He's been a captain of mine at a uh, youth league program. Love the kid. I uh, think the world of him. Rate him yeah. highly in all aspects as a, as a player, as a person. Dr. Cam. He's a doctor too, by the way. Uh, he just came out of that last year. Last year? The year before, 2019. So, yeah, I'm just Last year was a write off, though. So, yeah, I slept through last year. Months. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so all good. So, yeah. him being on board on this thing is, is great because we get to get a feel of a lot of things from different perspectives. Yes. As a you from one perspective, me from a perspective, and, and Cam. Yep. Um, but first of all, Cam, why are you jumping on the podcast? Because you don't have to jump on it. It's not as if it's part of your, your title here. What made you want to jump on and give your time up? Yeah. So, uh, well, it's my day off on a Thursday. I like 
coming down and spending some time here. Obviously, coach this afternoon. Um, but this is podcast stuff and workshop stuff has been something that you and I have discussed for a while now and trying to get more involved and, and see where we want to take it. But um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to play with a lot of and still do really talented people over the journey and, and my journey as well and just see that, you know, people walk away from the sport for different reasons and people flourish in the sport for different reasons. But what we're going to talk about today, D-Day in particular, is really, I think is a really important way of of understanding everybody and keeping people involved, keeping people engaged. Um, and I just like talking rubbish. With you well, so. <laughs> so he blends in well. It's what, exactly. So the last day <laughs> we did, it was hard and meaningful. It was all yeah, rubbish. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, why, that's why we muted it. Just so that's why we yeah. recorded. <laughs> it's just junk. <laughs> no, nah, you're right. He's right. It's fun. Yep. Um, we'll have you on board. Azza. Yeah, mate. So why do you think we are going to raise D-Day? I mean, you know, for me, I could promote it, but I'm, like that I'm trying to push it and push it push it. Yep. I do it. I'm always going to do it. It's always been part of me. Yeah. It'll always stay with me forever I do. And if I was in a business, I think we'll do the same. Yeah. Why do you think we're going to discuss D-Day and of all times and why? And what are your thoughts on it? I think so. Uh, continuing on from our last few podcasts, we've been talking about, about a lot about realignment and culture and, um, you know, people and groups coming together and being on the same page, that sort of thing. And D-Day has been a great tool for that. And I can talk from my own experience firsthand over the last few years since I've – As a coach. As a coach, I should say, um, where I've really bought into that concept and used that concept with my teams that it's generally breeded an element of success at a competitive level, but it's developed people as people and developed that connectivity in amongst the group to understand that, hey, we're not just here as athletes, but we're here as people and really bring those relationships a lot closer together, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big advocate for it. And and we say success, and we and that's gonna, this is going to come up so a lot. When we say success, so different measures, different reasons, different measures, and and that's usually it's usually defined by the group on the day. Sure, around Absolutely. what your own success. The buy in, like. the buy in, the buy in, exactly right. So when I say success for my groups, we experience success based purely on what we went through and spoke about that day. A change in a positive way is success. Absolutely. And that's, that's a pretty simple concept. Yeah. Uh, D-Day, just so we got clarity, because for us, we talk about like it's just part of our DNA. Yeah. D-Day, defining day, mm. uh, defines where you're at or where you were, where you're at, where you want to go yep. as individuals and as collective as a group, so as a team and all that stuff. So identifying as individuals and as a group and then work out what we can do to put it all together, connect it all together, and just see where it takes us on the journey. 100%. Um, so that's what D Day is. It's in team concepts. You can do it in workplace, all that stuff. But I do it with every team I have. Uh, and that's just a non negotiable. It's just how in depth we go. And we'll raise that with Cam about D Day. Um, so just so I know, I was at where, uh, well, it's Wyndham now, but at the time it was Werribee. Uh, I was at 2016. I was given the role to coach the youth league at Werribee. Cam Hutton was part of that. Wasn't the cap at the time. And we discussed. Uh, things moving forward as players, but then we I, I, they they got to experience what D Day was, what I'm about, and why we're bringing it to play. So maybe we'll get D, um, Cam to explain when we first met, yep. we knew of each other, what you you know what, what you want to say, and how it led to what it led to, and what we got out of it. Yep. You as yep. a player, as a team, and maybe understanding your coach and players and all that stuff. Yeah, and you'll chip in from a, the just coach's perspective and. Yeah. As long as I look, it makes me look good, I'll make sure that I'll just make sure he keeps going. Don't right, be right afraid direction. to sink the boot into him, Cam. Seriously. <laughs> huh? Just bring you down a peg. You know, I'm, just joking. I'm joking. Sorry, Cam. Go ahead, mate. All right, Cam's all your D Day. Uh, when it all got introduced to you, what it all meant and who the hell is this guy coming in going, what the hell is this? I'm here to just play basketball, mate. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to go into some whole new evolution of life. Yeah. So my first experience with, uh, with Daza was not our D Day as such. It was. Uh, I suppose it was a mini D-Day, thinking about it, um, where well, the culture at the club at the time, the group that we had, we had lots of guys, I suppose, coming and going and not really sure where they sat within their own basketball journey. And you sent out a text to everyone that had been in the program and some other guys that you wanted involved and said, I'm Darren, come down to the facility, we're going to have a chat. Um, and that wasn't D-Day as such, but that was, our, I suppose, our first experience of getting that group collectively together and, and just introducing what we wanted to do and what we're about. And, and we did, you did ask questions at the time of what was good, what was bad, what do you want to change? What do you think needs to be addressed? Um, and then weeks, months later down the track, 
before the season started, we selected the group, we had our, our team and our structure together. Then we sat down for, for our proper D-Day and it was Sunday set aside, four or five hours, we're coming in. We're going to do the first half on upstairs in the meeting room. Let's define what we want out of the year, what we need to get out in the open, what we're going to define as success, what we need from you as individuals, what we need from you as a team, and then we'll go down and train. And uh, we didn't train. We just, five hours? Five hours. Stayed upstairs <laughs> and just un- unpacked everything that was uh, that was going on within individuals and the group as a whole and made sure that we had a, a vision for um, for the future and for that season. How did you feel about that, Cam? So you, you didn't know him from a bar of soap, yep. really. Yep. You're sitting down and all of a sudden you're talking about a program, your involvement, your feel for it. To you, did you just go, this is just unheard of. I've never had to do this before. Or was it or like, oh, I've done this before, haven't done it to this level. Or was it like, oh, this has dawned on me that this could be, you know, something really great. I don't know. What yeah. was your thoughts at the time? Um, you, like this could be a load of rubbish. Or, yeah. So for me personally, I mm. um, had the privilege of playing in some really good teams and under some really amazing coaches. Yeah. Um, and I think all really high level coaches have some understanding of their relationships with their players and how they need to work. So yep. it wasn't a complete shock, but to that extent and to that depth and to that level of commitment to the off court aspect of what we were going to do, yep. particularly as we're talking about not pro athletes, not 25 to 30 year olds. We're talking about 18 19 year old kids for the most part. Yeah. Like at that at point in time, I was probably, yeah, 19 myself. And realistically, that's a, that's a tough age to get anyone on board with anything. Mm-hmm. Right. You think you're kind of invincible, you're unbeatable, you got all the talent in the world, you got egos, attitudes, personalities. Yeah. That's a big thing to go through and be vulnerable with when you think you're macho. Yeah. Okay. And so, from a from an athlete perspective, like I said, from my personal view, it wasn't unexpected, but the extent to which we were going into things like five hours is a long time. Yeah, of course. Five hours is, you know, a long, long time. Would you have thought it was a long time at the time? At the time, yeah, absolutely. Exhausting, emotionally draining. Yeah, you walk out of it, and like like I said, we didn't take the court. We had bags packed to get on. Everyone was in some sort of training gear. And we walked out, went home, put it back in the cup. Yeah. And yet we were knackered. Like, <laughs> yep. Yep. Like it felt like we've been running around for, for <laughs> yeah, most of that. You're just absolutely stuck. Well, was, mentally exhausted. You're huh? just exhausted. Yeah. Emotionally, mentally. Um, and I think part of that just comes from being challenged. Yeah. From a different aspect. Yeah. Which is which is at the time, it's always easy to sit back and reflect and say it's a really good thing. At the time, I'm sure there was guys in that group that, and even partly myself going, man, we just better hold out in and shoot the ball. <laughs> like, what am I, what am I doing? I didn't even, like, my shoes are still there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. But again, hindsight's a wonderful thing. And, and that was a really big part of why we were successful over the next 18 months is because we, we did that and we went through that process. Yep. Okay. Wow. There you go. And then it's amazing, like when we when you do these type of things, is you don't know what you're going to get out of it. No, I'm sure you walked in there yeah. going, I don't really know. Well, you, may, you may have known some of the some of the guys, but majority probably not. I'm yeah, but, guess. but you also got to remember, you get out. You got to remember there's testosterone in this room. Well, yeah, you walk in, you're about to tell some guys, hey guys, let's just peel back the layers, look at where you're at, what's going on, because yep. for me to be the best version of me, I need the best version of you. To get that, I need to know you, and you freaking need to know me, and you don't even need to know my story because then you know why I might be emotionally truly in tuned or I'm this or that, whatever whatever my story is. I'm, and I don't mean a story where you need a, a tragic story. No, just your story, who you are. That's your story, and then you'll work out. Well, okay, now I've got these guys here. I'm here, and why would I even consider an X and O or a concept of our goal setting if I don't know anyone? Are we going to gel? Are we going to connect? Am I going to teach a player certainly that way and that player that way? Is he a visual? Is he a verbal? Is this guy going to be this? And and then my traits. Am I going to have to be directive, consistent, systematic? 
Yeah, correct. Let's work no, it out. You've got to understand all of that. Yeah. The conductor of the orchestra. Got the tune going. So I, I, I know what I'm going to get out of it, is in I know that it's going to bring growth. I know we're going to connect. We won't create a divide. We'll do the un, we'll undivide. But there's how to what level? This depends on the, the, the people you're talking to. Yeah. So you got to really emotionally get connected and involved and really give them your heart and soul and, and let them show, show the emotion, show the feel that you want this. And um, I know we, we can't say it's been the last, when we, the pre podcast that didn't work. Yeah. You know, I, I said that, you know, I would even speak to a kid around half. Correct. I'd go far and beyond. And then, you and then say, I said, why would you do that? Yeah, so well, explain why you would do that. Because uh, again, a lot of coaches would go, if I have to speak with an athlete for an hour and a half to probably first understand or even just get them on board or buy whatever it is. This, away from, this is away from D-Day. If, if there's yeah, a reason why do you. that? Because I've got another nine or ten guys here who I could easily just go, yep, 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 and yep. I'm not going to waste my time on that. Why? Why do that? So the two parts is I have to is the concern. I'm not saying you, you, I don't mean you meant that. No, no, I was playing both sides of yeah, yeah, So I'm so, asking yeah, you, yeah. why would you spend an hour and a half of your time talking to someone? Well, a lot of people would say why I have to. It's because I want to. Two different, two different ways of saying that. Mm, that's true. I don't feel I have to. Mm-hmm. I want to. Correct. But why do I want to? Yeah. So I want the journey to be more easier and easier to create and develop ongoing in the long-term future. I can get by without doing this. Week by week, but I'll, I'll probably I'll enjoy it. I'll get Either frustrated. Way. I'll hit too many roadblocks and too many hurdles and think, well, hang on. I could have solved this. So, for example, if I find one player that needs an hour and a half of my time, so Cam needs 15 minutes of my time. Yep. Done, does it. You need an hour and a half of my time. There's a reason I'm doing that. You could be the problem. That might be a problem for other problems. So you might be the thing that might be, you might be a strong, Real strong, strong personality, trait, personality. whatever it is. Yeah. So I think, well, hang on, if, if we don't get this sorted out, it could lead to a bit of a, a spread of concerns and problems throughout the rest of the group. So you, you just got to try and work out who needs more, who may need a little bit less, but as long as everyone understands why, you're getting the balance you're getting. So why don't you, can I get 15 minutes of my time? Why would you get an hour and a half of my time? As long as we communicate and explain why and what's going on, yeah, we get balance. If I don't deal with those issues that have to, it becomes the thing I have to do something about this. Yes. I want to, so I don't have to. Yep. Gotcha. Is that fair? Yep. And then the issues probably don't bubble under the surface as the season grows, whatever it might be, that can really undermine relationships, success, whatever that is along the way. It becomes well, very difficult to manage very quickly, doesn't it? Yeah. And you and can fall apart. Yeah. And you can tell me all the, every day of the week that. Oh, it's basketball. Just focus on basketball. We can't. If I've got something that's just keeps drag, dragging me away from the game I love, I need to work out how I can deal with that in that safe haven of basketball. Correct. But if I have the right people around me to help navigate and work through that, it becomes easier. We get better development. We get better success yeah. and results, whatever those results are. Mm-hmm. And Cam will we'll go through that is the impact of what D-Day did. You know, from the first day we did the D-Day, which, which was another one the year after, and we did some mini ones in between. Why do you think I put so much time into the D-Days? Do you think it made my job easier to coach on game day or at training? That was still hard because you guys were pretty feral. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Lucky Cam sitting over here. I'd say. No, but yeah, you deal with 89-year-old boys. So it's not always an easy job. Oh, right? God, no. But <laughs> yeah, it did make my my journey and my, my, my reason to be a part of it a lot easier mm. and more enjoyable. So I did what I'd say is the hard yards, the emotional stuff early. Then the spot fire, they're easy to put spot fires. When they're raging, it just becomes worse. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think from uh, just before we go into that, what what comes back to with you know who who requires what time and why would you want to do that? When you do a D-Day and you define that stuff within the group first, then it becomes clear to the playing group from a player's perspective that your time isn't the value of importance because it can come across as, well, I only got 15 minutes, but he got an hour and a half, so he's more important than me. Mm. It's not that you're more important. Yeah. It's that your needs are different. Correct. And so when the playing group understands that, then your job is easier. And I think that's what it comes back to in terms of why, to answer Aaron's question, why why bother? Yeah. Because it's not the level of time that is important. It's, that that person's needs are met. Yeah. Um, and, it, and we didn't actually touch on this in the last one, but there was a couple of sessions that 
as I was captain for Darren and we had an assistant, um, Liam, and he was fantastic. Um, there was sessions that we didn't, we didn't train. We still played on game day, no injury. We were fine, but we were dealing with other guys on the team that needed something. And Darren and Pete come and said, this is not your problem, but this is what we're addressing. You guys sort it out, come out when you're ready. And sometimes that took 10 minutes. Mm. And we sit in the shop or sit upstairs and, and we just sort stuff out. Sometimes we'd get that done before walnuts were finished. Yeah. Little times we didn't come out and train. And the guys on the court weren't like, well, they've still got minutes on the weekend, but they didn't train. But once did that ever a concern? Yeah. I've done the roles. Because wow. everyone understood that that's what was put in place. Yeah, that's complete empowerment. Yep. And that's yeah. And and as a obviously I was in the fortunate position where I was trusted by them and the group to do that for people. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't get done without your D-Day in defining and understanding that everyone's needs are different and we're going to meet those so that if you're the, the two-hour person and you're the person that needs a coffee board and you're that person, great. If you're the guy that just needs a high five as you walk in the door, cool. Yeah. But we're happy to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why play management makes the word is crucial. Yeah. And all the good coaches do it. They talk about it. Yeah. yeah. And, and and then you look at the ones who play manage when it just comes to the X and O's or the ones who play and manage when it comes to the overall package. Yeah, correct. There's different coaches that coach on that as well. Yes. Yeah, the ones who just want to train the elite and make themselves look good. I can name them right now, but I'm not one of those moves. But if I was, I'd just be naming people off and you, while you're in the reason the have tos or the want tos. You know, and the ones who want to are the ones you can get more value out of and more engagement. And I don't want to say I'm the best X and coach. I'm not. I'm not the best structured coach. I'll tell you what I can do is get the players to play for me. Mm, correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I can get them playing for me, I can run the concept, which then looks like I'm running the structure, which makes me look good. Mm, but we've put things in place for that. Yeah. Um, and going back to him being a leader and the, and the empowerment of, of a role, we gave them accountability and responsibility. So we don't say, so I'm going to do, I'll give you an example. I'm adding two girls. We're running, I'm going to call concepts, right? So we're going to jump off a bit of tangent here. The reason is they're robotically, they get the green light, they still won't shoot or do, you know, they're still hesitant and hold back on decisions. But I'm giving you green light now. You can't say everyone's holding you back. You're getting the opportunity. What they're doing now, they're going to find an offense that each individual is going to look at. And offenses. I think we discussed this last week. Yeah, you told me about this. Yep. So they don't give them accountability to say, let's see what you think will work for you. So when it starts to implement it and it's not working, we're all accountable. So like you guys, you know, go through the process of what we need to do. And if you can't, I'll get involved. I'll help out. That's what we're here for. Yeah, yeah. But each one does their role and we all chip in together, do our bits and pieces. Everyone's role becomes easier. Yep. And that's why I want to do it. If I felt like I had to do that, I won't coach. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. You got to you got to you sort of split, define what your values are there. Yeah, I'm not wrong. Just do I? Yeah, that's fair. So that's you've fair. done D Day. Yes, I have. You've done D Day as a player. Yep. So maybe you bounce off. So what made you do D Day? Because you've never done D Day before. No. And I would probably you would tell us probably a while ago. In a, in a when point. I met you, I hadn't done it before. Yeah. Yep. So what got your boy in? To doing it. To doing it, and then. Now, now you're not preaching it, but you're you're in full favour that we that it should be a regular thing. Yeah, look, I, probably I think I've said it before, but it, just for those that probably haven't heard the story, so I had a I had a team which um, I didn't even select back in the day. Um, so I was away through that majority of that process. So we come back and we had some player movement, whatnot, for guys that didn't want to continue playing. Um, it was an under eighteen group at the time. And we we had the a really rough trot through. You go through you know the your normal season, your, your your grading phases and whatnot. We we fell quite quite short of where where we probably could have been. But anyway, so there was a lot of issues at play. But the first thing that and the reason why I reached out to you was I felt like I didn't have a connection with the group. I didn't have that connection. We moved into the season, no no real sort of connection with the group. X's and O's okay, but guys weren't playing for each other. Very confident they weren't playing for me. So there was big issues there. Could you pause one sec? Go. It's not about me because you got to work out what makes you want to go that direction. So why to go left instead of yeah. right? What well, me- at the end of the day, the responsibility is on me, right? If if we didn't have any connection and felt like we weren't achieving anything, the buck stops with me as a coach. Yeah, but why'd you come to me? Yeah. So for me, it was that moment of I've got to try something different here because what I'm doing is not working. Clearly it's not. Right. I mean, if you want to look at it strictly from a results point, we were two and six. 
or two and five at the time. Two and five, like that's that's alarm bells. Like that's your season nearly over. You know what I mean? VJBL. So, um, yeah, I, I, I approached you, Daz. I reached out and said, "Look, I'm needing some guidance, some help here." Um, and we came in and with the group and did the D Day, and but, it, it was it's so. So before you go there, yeah. there's a reason why I need to get this out because because no, I don't want to <laughs> selling it right. Yeah, but for you to go to Cameron or me or whatever, yep. what made you think I I knew what to do? Well, I'd seen I'd seen you around the around the traps, and I've seen the old transition sports thing, so I, got, I was curious. I was no, curious. No, I, I did my research and, and was curious around. Because you just don't what? ask someone for the sake of asking. No. You go there with intention because you've either done some research or whatever. I'm not saying yeah, it's correct. about us. No, no, no. You must have seen something or felt something. Yeah, I'd seen something and I've seen players with the merch or whatnot and I sort of got an understanding of who those sort of people were. And I go, oh, there must be something in this. So right. I, I took the initiative and reached out. Okay. Yeah. So just, we went, for, just, just for my own yeah. timeline. Yeah. Is this pre or post watching us get smacked? Which we'll go into. Yeah, mate. All right. Because <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. again, we discussed it yeah. earlier, but you sat there and yeah, it's over. And then you, you saw that turnaround. So that, that's the kind of event where you go, Oh well, I've seen what this mm. do. But mm. this was pre, this is yeah. simply just off a whim. Yep. Seen it around. Yep. Let's try something. Cool. Yeah, give right. me an and I'm, mm. I'm, 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 again I've got to be very careful because I'm trying to let this be a promotional thing right now. Yeah. You know what you want? The other week for a team, mm. yep. we played against them two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? So, I, I knew, I knew you did one. I didn't no, so what happened was, was I mean, I, they reached out to me, right? And me yeah. being me, I don't really focus too much on who we're playing. Yeah, rock up, we'll coach. I knew I was playing a certain team, yeah. but I didn't really think about the TSI things and rock up. Gets, you know, get them talking. I'm thinking, oh, I'm doing their workshop next week. <laughs> so I'm actually their opposition coach. So it was weird. That's weird. The basketball but community. Is what made more. them <laughs> come to me knowing I'm in that same. And I'm just trying to work out that yeah. there's reasons why people are reaching out and yeah. there's really why the D days are working because we've done a lot of D days that no one knows about. Yeah, of course. Reason being is potential looks of conflict of interest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, well, we don't want to look like we're going there, but you know, we don't think we're walking away from our club is supporting us. So we do a lot of things that no one knows about. Mm. We've done a lot of these for big V, VJBL, junior clubs, and now potentially another school. I've also helped an opposition school. These concepts. Mm, mm. That's why I asked the question because yep. there is something happening and there is something that comes off that and we'll discuss this massive yeah. loss we'll talk in a minute. Yeah, yeah. So, so go back to you. Yes, you're yeah, two and sorry, five. Really. Two you've you've reached five, out. I've reached out. We had a really good chat and we, we got to know each other. That was the start of our relationship. Really tight, yeah, really tight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we came in here, the group, did the D-Day. Yeah. Um, and got to really know each other as people, which was huge. And and at that point in my life um, as well, I mean, there was personal stuff that started to happen as well, like yep. my wife got sick and things like that. So that connect, the connectivity that we formed with that group was amazing through that year. We went on to the grand final from <laughs> two and five. Two and five. Nice. two and five, which was quite amazing. We had a team of seven, seven guys for the whole year, and by the time we got to the finals, one of them was crook as like we basically running with six guys that was amazing I still amazing see, I still run some of those boys now yeah i still keep in contact oh, with a lot of those guys two of them come and again come it'd be like you two years three years down the track you haven't seen them you just you bump into them and it's just like yeah it's amazing you just Absolutely. have that co that connectivity th those relationships built so yeah that was my first introduction to the the defining day so, got so powerful so powerful so that's why i've always gone back to it because people will see you made the grand final, you must know well. Everyone thinks it's all done on court. More training, you're uh, gonna get better. You're yeah, gonna do. You work harder, you'll get stronger. Yeah. But what people don't realize is some teams that don't realize that were truly down and out behind the scenes. Yeah. It looks good on the court, but what people don't see is what was done behind the scenes off the court to get in that way on the court. Yep. Yep. And I've found a lot of times I've always been taken over. I've had to go that way. It's a rebuild off the court first. Well, it's a connection off court first to make sure that's how good it looks on the court. Mm. It's the work behind the scenes of the court we do. Yeah, the on the court stuff I think is the most simplest stuff of all. Score one in, stop the other end. Pretty simple. <laughs> it's if you're all buying together, do it together, stand behind each other, and all that stuff. It's pretty simple. Yeah, uh, you have bad days, good days, but over the balance of the core of the of the season, you'll get more wins and losses. Correct. You want to base it that way. Mm. Um, as a player. Um, you've seen where he was on a two and five run. Yeah. We did D Day. Guys were you know, had a bit of baggage. Um, we did one the second year. We had some guys that we had a bit of a change. Yep. 
you notice when the when, when you guys had already done one, you're into it, and the, and the ones on the air were like, what the what the hell is this? Yeah. These are in tune, <laughs> and the five hours become quicker, and they go. Um, <laughs> yeah, the second one was definitely a lot shorter uh, in terms of the the off court stuff. But that's yeah. because guys walk in ready and willing to be open about it. Yeah. You don't have to go through that process. But then yeah. we had what three or four new guys come into the program sitting there like, I need to play basketball. What's I don't know, why are you telling me about your life story? Like, I, uh, yeah. it's nice to, yeah, you know, cool. But what are we doing here? But it also helps them buy in quicker. But yeah, but mate, but you guys sold the buy in. It wasn't me now yeah. trying to get to twelve players. It was me and eight others now convincing four others. Yeah. You see how the, how the layers got easier? Mm, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It was just simple. It was a simple task. And I reckon the cattle be surprised. We still did the five hours. He's going to think we did it quicker. It felt quicker because we knew that we are going to get more content out of it. We had more things to discuss and more things to work on because what we did last time gave us to this point. Yep. So if we do that, we could get to this point because – we didn't discuss it, but we lost a semi final that year purely to injuries, yeah, and brain farts. So we're up by sixteen in the, in the middle of the third quarter, but we had seven injuries. Wow. Two that were progressing us through. He, he he just got back from massive injury. Yeah, he wasn't himself. So we virtually got a new player in. We had well, seven injuries, six injuries. We're limping home. Wow. Uh, TJ, we had. Five foul, a foul foul situation. So sorry, yeah. it wasn't seven inches. Probably would have been at five, but we had foul out. So we're probably down about five, five and a half players left that could probably run us home. Mm. And I said to Pete, we're in trouble. If we're up by thirty at three quarter time, we're going to struggle. Yeah, right. We lost by three. Yeah. Would you? Was that fair? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that moment, I it. remember I had tear. Yeah. I was proud of it. I said, guys, it's just heartbreak. And my daughter was playing a grand final somewhere else. Mm. I'm even more more emotional. I'm going tangent here. Me and Pete got in the car. Tegan rings me. She lost her grand final by a couple of points. Me and Pete looked at each other, just start crying. We pulled over. What's going on here? Why were you this emotional? And then we realized that what we're carrying, what we're doing, what we're getting out of it. And I can what I felt in the car, Pete and, and Tegan's losses and these guys, and they felt the same when they walked in that room going, Absolutely. we're going to do this. Yeah. We are, we're there from what we've already started. Let's finish the job. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, and guys walked in with that. We got unfinished business attitude. Yeah, in a good way, not arrogant. In yeah. a, I want it. Like in excited. You know, in a twelve month period, we went from not making the finals, new group, new coaching staff, losing game three when we limped home, to and, and walking in that next season, everyone was like, "We got this. Yeah. Like, we're we're going. We're going to do this, and we're going to do this right. We know we've seen this success. You guys that are walking in the door." Get on board because this is what we're about. This is what we do. Yeah. And again, it, it's still a process from the east of hiccups. Still things happen. Oh, it's life. But yeah. human beings. We were, yeah. But you yeah. accept, you, you have know, to accept kids, those. But you accept those things. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm going to have a conversation. I've, I, I'm going to have a conversation with Cam. I don't want to have, yeah. but I'll have it. But I'm comfortable to have it because like we always say it will sealed, won't be sealed with a question mark. It'll be sealed with an embrace. Mm -hmm. We're good. We've got this. We had to do that. It's out. Let's look at clarity. Let's seal it. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone was sealed. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Um, Powerful. So next one. So move forward. So now we'll say about this game. So we think DJ is important. So what? We, we get connection and we get our same with each other. You know, we, we learn so much about each other. Yeah. Which makes you want to do more for each other. That's all I think. That's right. You're so invested. You're, yeah, so, yeah. you're emotionally invested, you're socially invested. Now. Yeah. And like you said, it's not about the X's and O's. I can categorically say when we're – Went from two and five, two and six, path through this process. It was less, so much less about the X's and O's. So you get two and five, and you go, "Geez, what is wrong with our X's and O's?" There's not too much wrong with them. It was everything else. The love for each other, the love, and, and just the, playing for each other, and it was just amazing. It was, that was one of the most amazing journeys I've ever had. Well, mm. there's a quote: "To love what you do, you got to love the environment you're in." Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Know, no matter how good the X and O's are, if the environment's not right, it's not going to work. Yeah. There's divide, there's issues, whatever. Mm. So we had all, you know, our things happening. It's all, you know, we're we run like a well-oiled machine. We only lost three or f three games. Like Two was against was Kilo. Uh, you met in the grand final. Reachable margin, so six, six, seven points. I think they were. Uh, at, I think our own doing. Yep. Uh, oh, good size. So it's not taking away their wins. No, no. I think they're we champions. just, yeah, yep. we're still going through some things that we probably hadn't sealed off yet. 
Mm-hmm. Got to game one, home, first time pulled the grandstand. We're excited. Fuck, grandstand's out. Big crowd in. We always get crowds. Place is buzzing. Yeah. yeah. You were there? I you was there. there, game one. I was there. Okay. So what are your thoughts on that one? <laughs> so I'm going there. Okay, you know what? We're, we're in the Hunter We know that. So game one yeah. is the is the, is the, is the test. Let's go and see what we need to do for it. Because you're going to have to have a game two. And then we'll get what happens then, right? Mm. Game one's over. Lost by 47 points. I'm going, holy shit. That's a 47 point loss in front of a home crowd. And it was just totally mind blowing in a way where, what was that? What just happened? Yeah, yeah we yeah. couldn't really couldn't really get a clear understanding. Yeah, you, know, you stand there going, everyone's looking and thinking, what did we just watch? Is that what we came for? Yeah. Is that where you guys are at? We've heard so much about you guys. Blah blah. blah. Uh, what are your thoughts? Because you're an outside looking in, mate. Yeah, what, yeah. what are your thoughts? Oh, and then, we'll, and then we'll talk about the captain. What he thought. <laughs> I felt for you being, so being a points. fellow coach. I felt for you. I go, and I've been in games where you get belted and it's a lonely place as a coach. Your assistant coach, there's nothing you can there's do. You belted and then there's, there's belted. belted. We yeah. got that triple version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's a lonely place. You've probably tried to pull every lever you could through the game to try and change the course of it. And ultimately, you still, I mean, at the end of the day, 47-point loss. In a three-game series, how do you come back from that? So I'm looking at it from the outside. You know, I didn't know Cam. I didn't know any of the group. We'd never really spoken about your group. I know you as a person. We've only really started to get to know each other anyway. I'm so, there. so there's a judgment view already. Yeah. I've not known what we've done. Yeah. How many long? So how, as a general amazing. observer, I go, well, this is over. Wowee. Wowee. Um, I, well, you hope it's not, but you go 47 points. You, you, don't, you can't. I can't imagine how you'd recover from that. That was my initial thoughts walking away from that. I called it a hiccup. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so the next part of this is really interesting. So I think uh, you when can probably home, explain. Like, well, it was great. Yeah, you can explain your point, and then <laughs> Cam from a player's perspective. Like this is really interesting. Well, we spoke about it before when we were on mute. So this is this is really good for the people that are going to listen to this next part. So go for it. So who's going? Me or you? <laughs> I'll go first. Is that a cap? Yeah. Well, well, before just... he tries to explain himself, <laughs> <laughs> Darren can't do math. Yeah, there we go. There we go. He absolutely, he come in, he, he rolled up Tuesday and fudged Tuesday the numbers. Tra- Tuesday training, Tuesday training. He fudged the numbers to a point where he found us a 10-point win out of game one. It was like 60. Actually, it was 4 10-point win. Yeah, 10-point win. 61 points. I found, I found you 61, point 61 points. Yeah. Wow. I thought they were easy gets too, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Coaches always think that. And uh, yeah, just manipulated it to from a 47 point loss to this is how we could have won the game, which sounds ridiculous. Like from four, the outside looking in, not sounds, knowing you guys, what the hell is this yeah. guy on? No, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, not going to work. No. Um, and we didn't come in and watch any film. We didn't come in and scout Kilo. Just a we board. didn't come in and train. We did that, and then we went and did twenty minutes of shooting drills and some free throws, and went home. And that was our session. <laughs> After <laughs> losing by forty-seven. Wow. Okay. Now you went on to win game two, yes? Correct by four, something like that. Four points. So, so, you, so you're one point. You're ten points short. So I was pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> they went by fourteen. <laughs> My math was correct, but so I'm sorry. I was ten points out, boys. I'm I'm sorry. My mathematical equation doesn't work. I was I was ten out. Yeah, but fifty one points in a round doesn't uh doesn't happen too often. I would I would. That's special. To say. Special that's, way. That's special. Big. Special that's, way. People big, talk about twenty point ten rounds being like that's wow. that's impressive. Yeah, like well, well done. Now I was in their home court. Massive crowd. Massive vibe. Massive. Already pre celebrations. I was understanding that they thought it was done and dusted. Champers were on ice. Ready yeah. to go. Um, and, and where. We had a, a great following at the time. Um, we had some serious traction with the with the juniors of the club and our families and all that. Yeah, yeah. We, but we, to be fair, you, you guys, we we created that. Yeah, absolutely. That was there's a reason why we got support. Yeah, let me tell you that right yeah. now. That wasn't from a no, club. You, you built that through the year. We built you, that. There's a reason why it happened. Really good That's another part of the D Day. Yep. That they the boys brought into that and spread it into the club. Yep. And then we had an extended version of the team from the people that come for us everywhere. Absolutely. It was amazing, yep. but that wasn't clubs. That wasn't from the club's perspective. No. That was what these guys well, did. Nice. And, and to be fair, we still had people to game too. But I'm telling you right now, it was at half a quarter of. And you expect yeah. that at a home game uh, and an away game. Sorry, after yep. having a home crowd. But 
people just jumped off ship. Yeah. It was over. Look, I wasn't at game two. <laughs> yeah, sweet. There we go. No, but um, I, I right. honestly had a pre He came game three. <laughs> oh, they're back. Let's get them I back. I came the next day. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I honestly had a pre-family organized event. So I would have been at game two. Reluctantly, I <laughs> would have been walking in there for game two. But no, sorry. Well done. Good Thank job, you. mate. To be fair, I, 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 I'm trying to remember the change. Of, I don't think we were concerned about game one. Once we got to game two, we were ready. So talk us through the journey as the coach now. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Cam's talk through the, the I guess, the posts. The, dealings there's, there's of it. There's a couple of things you look at, right? Do we mm. change our style of play? The answer to show is no. Yeah. We lost three games. Why would you change what got you there? That's one thing. It wasn't broken. Yeah. It just – Fell apart. It just, yep. Which means it can be rebuilt. For okay? different reasons. Just fell apart. For different reasons. Yeah, so, that, so no change. That we, was a, we, we had stuff going on that people, again, from the outside looking in, you wouldn't. the on-court result wasn't a result of our talent, our X's and O's, anything. Yes, to some extent, that broke down. Yep. But we went into that game carrying stuff that nobody should have to worry about. Yeah, so we were in bricks. It's not an excuse because when I was on the Tuesday, we still spoke about the numbers, not about what happened that day. Yeah. Two guys were in a serious car accident. I'd go get them. Police there, cars written off, shaken, and like we, we, we thought it could have been killed. Could have been this, dead. The car was written off. It was smashed. Yeah. Brought him back here. Tried to set on the game day. A couple other things happened. And there was another thing that I think I had to try and resolve at 5 o'clock. I'm trying to remember what that was. I can't say no. Yeah, there was something else here. Yeah, something I did. I had to work out what's yeah. going on here. The other wow. thing too wow. that we, we gave those guys the option to say, "Don't play." Sit. Yeah, and it was the a credit to them, but also a credit to what we had built. They said, "No, we're in. We we built this." So we backed them. We we built this. Yeah, and as it, we're not in a great place. But we're not missing this. Yeah, and this is the, this is what's going to get us through is to play tonight. That's big. We're That's rattled, big. but I still think we could have won the game. If we looked at the way, I know I looked at sim- I looked at simply. Yeah, with your creative maths. So we'll make it. Well, <laughs> well, this is the thing, but right? You you went in you went in with an approach and just shifted the mindset to. a little bit. So yep. the holiday was if we go in there and say how how much we did wrong, how good they were or whatever, or the or the reasons why we could have been rattled. How about we look at this, the num- the numbers differently? Right or wrong? Look at the numbers. When you're down by ten, you might play different to when you're down by five. If you miss a foul shot, which puts you one up, or if you miss a foul shot, puts you one down, it makes it in the time of the game, it makes you change the way you play. So we've got all those scenarios. So quarter one, quarter two, miss foul shots, which they convert to this. And if we didn't have done that, we might have done that. And our percentages were lower than normal. We're, we're a good shot. So our numbers were down. We get a little bit 5% out of this, another percentage out of this, and then we convert on this. Then they wouldn't have been chasing that, and then we wouldn't have been shooting like that. The whole game's different. Of course. And then last quarter, you're trying to fire your way home, shoot, shoot the hell out of it. And in the third quarter, I said to the boys, mate, we've we've been down by 24 and one games. These. So 20 points not much for us to worry about. But what we didn't see coming was the 27 points on top of that. Yeah. So we'll call I'll, I'll say that's the one bad quarter that we just couldn't control. Normally 20 would get down to 10. We'll get from 10 down to five. And then we are the best team to get any team home in that scenario. Yep. We're good at that. So I changed that. I said the numbers. I gave a presentation. See it differently for what it is. That's it. Don't talk about Kilo. Don't change the style of play. But one thing we didn't do was shoot Cody out training Thursday. We raised the bar. So instead of going, oh, we need to be cautioning because, you know, I've had game one and limping home. <laughs> we trained hard. I was more hard and determined to make sure that we keep executing our training the way we need to train at a different level. Yep. But we didn't change it. Yep. Is that fair? Yep. I got in the car. Rain Kazza, he doesn't always take my call, by the way. <laughs> Especially after that week. Yeah. <laughs> and I said to her, I'm emotionally done. I cannot do any more. It is what it is. Yeah. What will be will be. Yeah. Didn't think negative, didn't think positive. Just it is what it is. Yeah. We couldn't have done any more to re refocus, reshift, redirect, whatever you want to do it. To, on that set, I only wouldn't go, oh, we've already lost. We weren't the under. Well, we weren't the underdog because they were virtually guaranteed to win the game. So actually, we're in a better position. Mm. Not the underdog. That's probably the wrong example. Oh, we're in a better. Yeah, we were wrong. Wrong example. We, we were the underdog. We were, we're the so, underdog. <laughs> what, what I meant by that was in your mind, you yeah, weren't yeah, yeah. the underdog. Yeah. So yeah. sort of right analogy, but everyone would think, oh, well, you know, we've lost game one. 
But hang on, they beat by 47 points. So they're expected to win tonight and celebrate tonight and, and, and bust the champagne bottles. Yeah, pressure's on that. So we just walked in going, well, we can't do any worse. We're just going to find the 61 freaking points that That's Dad's found. That's tough. Well, guess what? We found 51. One by four. Lost by six in game three. And you were up. Knowing that we had given yeah. everyone we got that week to get to it where we were. So I'm going to say our grand final was done and we, we were successful. Yeah. yeah. But why, did, why were we able to do that? What were we able to go through that journey that week? What have we prepared for? What have we done? What was the first initiative that we got together to build on, to work from, to get to where we were together? Well, that was us reaping the rewards from 18 months from our first D-Day. And D-Day just does what? It gets you to share and care and understand and know when to push and when to pull back and when to say, hey, can we do this? Or, hey, put your head out of your ass. Or, hey, mate, you know what? You're down out today. Yep. we will got you. We'll raise the bar for you today, but next week you need to raise the bar for us. Yep. You got to know that we'll carry you, we'll work with you. But if you're going to give me that, just give me 100% of that. Yep. <clears throat> I think that's where it all comes from. Yep. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yep. well. We could, we could have come in Tuesday and watched film and trained hard and run us into the ground and we need to fix this and fix that. And fi- At some point, you're probably just overthinking it. Like Darren said, we were, we were a good team. We lost three games all year and – we we were talented, and we'd had we'd had a whole season to sort all that stuff out. Yeah, there's no real reason for us to. You make minor adjustments. Oh, we, we probably didn't guard that guy well. We didn't. We need to just make sure we hit this better on this screen. Mm. Get, let's get some timing stuff right. Yeah, but that's what you do every week. Yeah, well that's right. You, you know, don't throw the baby out no. of the bathwater. Uh, you know something we haven't discussed. So, if we, so the, the year before semi finals the best of three in those days, grand final was just a one-off, one-off game. Yeah, it's yeah flipped correct. around. Yeah. You know, we lost to semi final game one by 17 points or something like that against Whittlesey. Remember that? So we went back to here. We watched game. Yeah. We just broke down the simplicities of probably wasn't as bad. You know, we were a bit yep. harsh, but direct, but just saying, we can do this. Yeah. We beat them in game two at Whittlesey. Then backed up game three, we fell to injuries. And we're just going to run our legs. We just, unfortunately, with five minutes, the game went too long. Mm-hmm. But we've already done, we, we've done it. We did it for two years straight. Yeah. The struggles, the fight backs. So we're there. We're not it's coming to this. And mm-hmm. and every time we, we could have faltered and, and given up and, and dug ourselves a hole, yep. we all somehow together, not separately, together, each time got back up to it because of the yeah. D-Days. I would have imagined what, we spoke about this before when we were on mute, but. You could have come in after game one of that grand final series, ranting and raving. Or from a player's perspective, if you hadn't probably done that D defining day, built that connection, those relationships, you players could have been pointing the finger, bickering, yep. punching on even. Yep. What do we do? What, what happened? What happened? Can you describe the the sort of aftermath of that night? Yeah. All I had in my head was I'm getting sacked. So just say no, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I would have cared too bad. <laughs> It's like, I'm going to take this. He's going to Hey, you blokes. <laughs> <laughs> now, we are, yeah, like we did discuss a little bit earlier, yeah. the only thing we got yelled at for that day was uh, one of the boys sent, sent a fire extinguisher flying down the hallway out of frustration. Huh. And it was, you can take frustration out however you wish, but be respectful for the place that you call your, your home court. Go pick it up. We got an absolute pasting for that. And then when we got back onto the game, it was just, hey, this this ain't us. We got things going on. We'll fix it. We've been here before. Come in ready Tuesday to go. That's amazing. Belief. And, D- and Dazzle will find sixty one points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey? And and like you say, it could it could have been finger pointing and it could yeah. have been bickering and and yeah, as I say, even punching on and fighting like egos and and those kinds of things run hot when you're in a bad when your back's against the wall. Yeah, absolutely. And there was disappointment. Don't get me wrong. You, there's a lot of heads in hands, but oh, a lot of people held back from tears, mate. Yeah, like from oh, the, the that's the like grand final game one, forty seven point. That's on your really home debilitating, yeah. especially really. when, especially if you look at this group. Like they were, the, they were, um, not losing interest. They were questioning whether they're out. They want to play anymore. Is it worth it? You know, eighteen months prior, to be able to just go from that to hurting from losing, you know, it's going to get a grand final. The way they, who they were earlier to where they were now was amazing transformation as a human being. That's right. Within sport or within life. That's why I'm very passionate. That's why I think my life is changing about what I want to do here. Mm. 
the quality of what we can bring out or the best we can bring out of someone is how much we work on more that we put our work as much on, which is the personal development of someone away from the court that impacts what they do on the court. Yep, 100%, mate. Um, 100%. And I think we need to do more of that, but yep. I am a person who wants to do more. I don't have to. I don't feel I need – I have to. I just want to because I know it will happen down the track. Uh, and I understand that coaches, you only got certain times and certain commitments, but you chose the commitment. So if you generally care and want to make something out of it, you're going to want to give more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you love a job that you work at and you get paid third hours, but you love the bosses, you love the people, you're probably going to do the extra. But you know, down the track, the actual will come back. Absolutely. You now, they're the things that you see. The people who just, oh, it's all right, boss, I'll stay back and help you out, mate. Don't worry, it, will just, it, will, it works out in the wash, you know? Mm. They're the things you got to look at. Um, Absolutely, mate. you got to give more. It's just the way it is, mate. And what, what is more and less? Is there a, as a coach and player, do we have a level of hours that we do, we commit to? So I'm a coach. I get an hour and a half of game. Say an hour and a half, pre-game yeah, yeah, and yeah, after, yeah, yeah, hour yeah, and a half. Yeah. yeah. I get two trains for some, yep. hour and a half each. That's three hours. Two hours, yeah. So say it's five hours. That's a five-hour scope. So when a coach gets a job in VJBL, I'll take a job, do they only give the five hours? I could categorically say you don't. <laughs> but what? But what? Just say, just to, um, let's measure on something else. When we yeah. say we have to and want to, having to do more. No, you. What want- do you classify as more when we say you're going for five hours at least? It's the separate conversations that you're having with your players, separate conversations you may be having with parents because there's things going on that need consideration and need your input on and need your guidance on and nurturing and all those sorts of things. It's more than five hours, more than six hours. Absolutely is. If you care enough, if you're that person. If it needs to be done or it's warranted, there is no capped hours. No, there's not. Absolutely not. Give what you can, as much as you can, when you can. 100%. 100%. You agree? Yeah. And, and, the that's, more, and the more you give now, the less you have to give later. Yeah. And that's why, like, we talk about a lot. The season is so long. It's a 12-month. It's a 12-month thing. It just doesn't stop. A lot of coaches get tired. Mm. It's it's mentally draining. Oh, and I feel for them all. And I feel for the if, ones. If, if you're the one that wants to, you're in, you're all in. You well, know, you're well, giving everything of yourself because you want to. Well, being a first-time coach now compared to pre-COVID, it's going to be harder than ever before. Because you don't really know what you're dealing with. Yeah, it's not as simple as hey, I'm going to go in, coach a bunch of kids, play sport, and then move on. Mm. I got a lot of rebuilding to do, and it might not be about the court stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, which is the journey you guys went on. Loved it at the start. Yep. You know, rebuilding whatever you know the the program essentially. But we had in your group, the John boys. I'm loving. It cause I, I got to inherit an amazing group of guys after the Ruby journey. He used to that was shattered, up. broken. Hey, he used to build them. We used up. to build them up. I'm too fair. <laughs> they, 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 they were easy and they were easy pickings. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> well, let's, let's go back even to preseason one year. We had a full blown fight. No like, joke. This, this isn't just. A, oh, you this, should hear what I did. This, this isn't just a team that we used to smack up and and beat by thirty every game in the season. Right. We had a preseason match against them, and there was a fist fight. Jesus. Now, what do you think I did? I hope you just didn't do anything. Got the coach. Said, no, no, this I said, get your players and I'll get my players. Get them in the middle right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Said, lock them up. It was a practice match, mind you. Not a, not a big yeah. V-sanction yeah. game. So we it did. Was, it wasn't going on record. It's all right. <laughs> we did a lock arms. It was on my, I'm a person who locks arms and huddles. Yeah. So lock arms. And look at me like, who the hell is this idiot? Yeah, yeah. I said, lock arms. They locked arms. There's blokes right. hugging each other, just yeah. had their fists up, fist each up. <laughs> up each other's grills. Just trying to beat the suitcase out of each other. Guys, yeah. practice match, emotions. If this is what you guys stand for, I want no part of this. Yeah, right. I'm trying all of them. Yeah. The other case, you're sitting there going, <laughs> the hell is it? Yeah, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. I'll back that. I'm just like, because like, like, I was like, you're people here to watch the game. Yeah. And you want to do this in a practice, let alone a real game? Yeah. I said, after we do this, ridiculous. we're going to break up and we're hockey lining. You're all going to acknowledge each other and we're going to start this process again. If, and I said to my player, you're done. I don't care what the other player says. And I said to the other, your player's done. Yeah. I'm, we're making the decision for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be fair about this. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. we'll hockey line it, reevaluate and reconnect. Great practice match. But then we beat him up every time. we smacked him. <laughs> <laughs> they no, didn't recover after that. And we joke about these guys. <laughs> no. So, so we got these but guys. You, you had them. 
Yeah. So you had that group. Again. Same story. Mm. Got him first year. We started compete. Had no idea what D Day is. One guy goes one day, Dazza, you keep talking about all this stuff and 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 you know competing and developing and winning. He goes, I don't know what the word winning means. We've never discussed that word. Things you don't think about. They never worked on the word winning. So then we got to a semi final, just fell short, worthy of a grand final, and went to a grand final the season after. But in the second year, the captain was struggling, trained pretty, how it looks was wrong. His engagement was wrong. His focus was wrong. His engagement was totally out of whack. And no, I was, I was working with that, but I knew what was going on. Because so I probably didn't. Not to the degree. Yep. So then we had a game that week and I was, I was done. It was going to be, um, we need him to get, we need to give him time out. I was going to actually shut him down yep. for a week or two, go get some time. Mm-hmm. So in the huddle, uh, in the after and change on the game, I, th- I think we'd just fallen short again. Not concerningly, like we're still winning more than we're losing. It's me being, you know, it's a spot fire. And they're down next. I think they're feeling that we can win and we can do more. Yeah. So we did a bit of a day day and we weren't going to let it change them. So all the hot food was waiting. Everyone's waiting. So I don't care. We leave and we express and we're out of here. Some, you know, I spoke and the, and the captain tippy toed. So I went back and said, mate, you need to let everyone know what's going on right now. Share it. Bring him in and just tell us what that was going on. He just let it out. He, he broke down. Yeah. Wow. But as he's, as he's letting it out, the water's leaving. The weight was going. And once we had that, he was back. The team was back. We had a leadership back. We had this back, that back, and it just bang. That's amazing. So it's a grand final series. Yeah. We lost to a freaking good side. They were ready. They were better prepared than us. Yeah, and they were physically. They were, they were they, physically. I don't, I'll rate them. I always rate them. really good. And they had NBA one players. They were, they, were, they were good. They were a good team. We were a good side, uh, but I think we just – They were more and, physically mature than your boys. And I also changed the rotation. I should have just stuck to what was working and just played that out. But that's, that happens. But to be fair, again – you wouldn't normally be able to do that if no, you, you didn't stand it. prior to that, that we are going to listen to each other. We are going to care for each other. And we do want to do this for each other. Yeah. That's why I think the D-Days are amazing. Yep. Great That's rewards, nice. great satisfaction, and great success. Yeah. Not necessarily wins. Yeah. And the D-Days, you set what your success is going to look like. Correct. That's not the the grand final or we finished the first or whatever it is on the ladder. Your six, You define what the success looks like. Because at the end of the day, and unfortunately not everyone wins that, Championship. It's the only there's, there's the not, that's not the percentage. It's yeah. the one percent that get rings and medals. Yeah. yeah. So if so that's all you're defining your success on. How many guys go through pro careers without ranks? That doesn't mean <laughs> many. That right. Yeah. Heaps. So many. Yeah. Heaps. Absolutely. Did, they're I, still great players. Only crazy and affording boys. My second year as a rep coach. I told a young kid, you know, he's, he's probably gonna be a fringe player, but you're gonna get the journey of a lifetime because we're gonna win the state championship. I called that before we even done the the uh, preseason, <laughs> we got to great. We got to VC on the very last grading game. I'm like, <laughs> what do it? And that's why you have no hair now. Yeah. And then we won it. And then we went. And I said, we go. And I said, we'll go nationals. So we went. We won the VC. One went to nationals. I'm like, <laughs> I put pressure on myself. Never, never do that again. <laughs> never call it. I was like, oh my god, what am I doing here? Wow. <laughs> so how we feel about what we discussed? And I, I, I think as we pre-recorded. We did say a lot of stuff earlier. Yeah. But I still think yeah. we've done well what we've done on this version. Yeah, absolutely. Think? I think this version was actually it's probably more really refined. To be more refined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. No, but it was- <laughs> Unless we're just, so I'll get my 10 bucks back. It's good. <laughs> Correct. Um, Correct. Uh, so, really good chat. So for you, Cam, what are your thoughts on, on a message? Because we always um, say we want to be on the same page and all that stuff, but I'm saying there's a bigger picture now. What is the same page? For me personally is you know, we've got to get them engaged. The kid's back on court. Participate, engage, enjoy, develop, wins in that <laughs> expectations a little bit pushed. I think there's been an order thing wrong at the, time, at the moment. Overall, not at everyone, just mm. overall. Mm. What's the words and what messages of, of what you want to say out there? You reply, you've seen it, you see kids here come and go, you see the pain and suffering. Not, not everyone's in pain and suffering, but there's a lot of hurt going on right now. Yep. And a lot of confusion and a lot of misunderstanding of sense of belonging as a player. Within the team, what's your message? I think this year's just got to come with an asterisk to say this is we need to redefine success. As you say, it's not wins and losses, not championships. But if you can define it as we just want to get back and join, give so many people time to reevaluate last year. Coming out of last year is it's a once in a lifetime, hopefully, thing that is going to happen. And so we just got to get back people doing what they love. So if you're mm. a player and you're struggling right now, yep. and you've been down that road, wherever it is, doesn't matter if it's yep. high degree, low degree, it doesn't matter. 
what would make you get your love back? What would you, what would, if you were in a situation, say COVID, amplify that by bringing COVID into it, injury or whatever, what would make you love the game? What would you like to see right now that bring that passion back? Well, what keeps me coming back is the guys that I, I go in to play with every day and, and playing for someone else. When you play for yourself, and you and I have had conversations along the way when I was like not enjoying basketball and I was like, ah, I'm going to give it up. And your first question to me was, who are you playing for? And when you're playing for yourself, you don't get the same satisfaction out of it. Correct. When you go into battle and you're playing for the nine... 10, 12, whatever guys it is, girls it is that are next to you and your coaching staff and you've got more invested in their success than worrying about the fact that you didn't score 30 that game, you, you just enjoy it. You just go and you love it because you see it makes other people happy and yeah. you get to enjoy the work. Great point. Great you point. get to enjoy what you do. It's, like, it's the same thing as you coach for yourself or yeah. you coach for the team. I was like, as I was lost last year, not did my girl, just in general, because I think I found my where I'm heading, and I wonder whether me coaching is the ideal thing for me right now. Because, but Friday night, I nearly had tears in my eyes, and I lost by four. They're packing them out, out that way. I'm like, Dad, what's going on? I got that, I got that feeling, that moment of it's been tough. You know, yeah. maybe maybe it was more the fact that COVID, the business, the life, the family, the health, the it's all building up, and he's coaching my theme because I mean I'm, I'm passionate, but I'm not I'm not getting the things I want to try and achieve. I'm not saying wins. Friday night, those girls brought me back in, yeah, yeah. with emotion. It's amazing. They didn't ask me, they didn't beg me, they showed me. Yeah, that was amazing. That's Does that make feeling. sense? Yeah, great feeling. What about you, as you know, some of you as a coach, whatever, like. If you were strong with coaching right now, because I did, and I and, and I got it, yeah, I've still got a long way to go because I, I just yeah. think I'm I think I'm battling a lot of things right now. Yeah, you are. Yeah, my sense of belonging in, in regards to what my truly what I'm really what I should be doing mm. and how I can bring more value. I just want to help people. I just want to make a difference, mate. Yeah. If you if you were strong with coaching right now, what would bring your love and passion back? What would you need to happen to bring COVID and for everything? Um, back still, you know, just bring all, that, all those things that have come in. Yeah, what would bring you back in? Uh, along Cam's lines is you, you're there for the other people to make. If if you can, if you're buying into, and the reason why you're there is to make other people better and enjoy that relationships with others. To me, then you're back in, which I think is probably where you probably felt like you were Friday night. By the sounds of it, you felt yeah. like you those that connectivity with your group was back in that brought you back in and um yeah that that would be it for me that that's the pure pure reason why and again we're, we're, we're going along okay we, our group we're, we're you know we're, we're kicking goals at the moment but we're all connected we're absolutely connected as a group that's why we're probably really enjoying ourselves at the moment so it can't be simplified to bring the love back mm, as, I'm, as i'm trying to say yeah uh, just invest in each other's relationship. Absolutely. And care for what you do, why you do it, and ensure that you want to do it, not feel as if you have, have to, do, to it. do it. Yeah, exactly right. Well, that's mate. pretty simple. Mm, exactly. But I'm struggling with it, so it can't be that simple because I'm about, I've got a lot of things going on in my life right now. <laughs> I'm trying to just complicated. I'm trying to build Rome in a day. That is not possible, but I'm pr trying to prove it wrong. All right. All good, guys? Yeah. Uh, we are, we are not on mute, so we actually got the recording. So, guys, just so you know, we recorded previously on mute and screwed it all up. That's why we keep going back to what we said earlier. When you go, what did they say earlier? Mm. We mean the pre-recording yeah. of the episode 27A. Yeah. <laughs> all right. two. Love you guys. Hope you're having yeah. fun. We have fun. You know, again, as long as it gets across someone, we're happy. Great uh, great job all. Thanks yep. for coming on. Thanks, Cam. Uh, we have it on more often. Love you. Take care. And again. Just connect. Bye. Take care, guys.